Welcome to Sunday School Online, St. Eckenwell's Barking Footsteps Lesson. Our topic for today is Jesus, our redemption. Our memory verse is Romans chapter 5, verse 6. For when we were yet without strength, in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. Let's pray. Dear God, Thank you for the Bible. Please help us to know you better as we read it in Jesus' name. We pray. Amen. Warming up. What is redemption? Redemption means Jesus Christ, through his sacrificial death, purchased as believers from the slavery of sin to set us free from that bondage. In other words, Jesus bought us through the death on the cross. So we are no longer under the power to do bad things but we are free to do the right things that God wants us to do. Worship time. Hallelujah, 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 praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Our Bible reading is taken from John chapter 14, from verse 5 to 12. Jesus, the way to the Father. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really know me, you will know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. Jesus answered, Don't you know me, Philip? Even after I have been among you such a long time, Anyway, who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am in the Father and that the Father is in me? The words I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority. Rather, 
it is the Father living in me who is doing his work. Believe me when I say that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. Or at least believe on the evidence of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, whosoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing and they will do even greater things than this because I am going to the Father. Story time. With love and affection, the Apostle Paul wrote to the young church in Rome. To those who are loved by God and called to be his very own, I am eager to tell you the good news of your Messiah. In this letter, Paul would reveal things about God that could be understood only through the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus. Paul said, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ because it is the power of God to save everyone who believes. Paul reminded the Romans that, long ago, something terrible had happened. Sin entered into our perfect world. It all began when Adam and Eve disobeyed God, bringing a dark curse over everything God had created. The special relationship that God had with his creation was broken. From that point in history, the curse of sin was passed down from person to person, affecting every man, woman, and child. After the fall, people were born slaves to sin. Paul wrote, All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Sin broke everything, including friendship with God. People no longer trusted God, and they rebelled against Him, becoming hopelessly lost in the darkness of sin. Peace and happiness were replaced with fear and worry. And there was good reason to worry. The curse of sin constantly put healthy people at risk of sickness and disease. But worst of all, sin caused everything to die and be forever separated from the goodness and glory of God. Of this awful truth, Paul wrote, The wages of sin is death. But from the very beginning, even before the world was created, God's loving thoughts were toward his lost creation, and he had a plan to win them back. Because death was the only payment for sin, God would send his son, Jesus, to take the place of the lost who were sick with sin. Jesus showed the most amazing act of love and friendship by dying for the very ones who had disobeyed him. Paul wrote, Most people would not die for a righteous person, although some might be willing to die for a person who does a lot of good things. But God showed his love for us that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. God came to save us just as he had promised. Jesus' death made a way for people to be forgiven and for every sin to be carried far away and forgotten forever. There is no other power on heaven or earth that can save people from sin and death. By the name of Jesus, all people can be saved. God will rescue anyone who cries out to him and asks for help. Paul wrote, For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. When people believe that God raised Jesus from the dead, it changes everything. By faith, they will confess Jesus as their Lord and ask him to lead their lives. Believers understand the great price Jesus paid for sin and humbly give their lives to God. This is a big decision and one that can be very difficult. Following Jesus means turning away from sin and selfishness and instead trusting God for every part of life. Paul wrote, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. 
Sin makes God angry because it hurts and destroys the creation he loves, which is why God has promised to punish sin. Believers don't need to fear God because they are forgiven. God sees those who believe in Jesus as his own children, and in his eyes, his children are righteous and perfect. The good news of Jesus is that sin's wages have been paid, and the gift of salvation belongs to God's children. Paul wrote, Now there is no longer punishment for those who are in Christ Jesus. Instead, you have been given the spirit of adopted children, so that now you cry to him, Abba, Father. Today's craft, you will need an A4 paper, pen, and a ruler. Draw two square shapes and a cross in the middle as illustrated here. Color in the square on the left dark to represent sin or bad things that people do. Draw the cross of Christ in the middle. Now, which side of the cross are you? Draw yourself in one square. Reflection and Discussion In the beginning, God created people to be his special friends. He wanted to be with them all the time and share their lives with them. He wanted to show them the best ways to live. But people decided they were they knew better than God, so they tried to live life their own way. They made some bad choices that really upset God. And because God is so good, it's not possible for him to be near to anything bad. So people ended up being separated from God. Can you suggest some of the bad things that people do? What kind of things make God sad when we have ended up separated from God? Can you suggest all the good stuff that is part of God? We are separated from all the very best things too. What can we do about this separation? People have tried to build bridges to God by doing good things, going to church, giving to the poor, But none of the bridges are long enough because we can never be as good as God is. We can never make up for the wrong things we've done. Do you think God is happy that we are separated from him like this? This makes God very sad. So sad that he was willing to do something amazing to rescue and bring us back to him. Father God knew that only someone perfect would be able to get across that gap. So he sent his son Jesus. The Bible tells us that Jesus was God through and through. And so he was a perfect as his father was. But Jesus was also a human being through and through. So he experienced what it was like to be separated from God like we are. Jesus made up for all of our wrong stuff by dying on the cross. What has the cross done? The point is to give the gospel message. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you that we can live with you because of the cross of Jesus. Amen. Thank you for joining us today. We hope to see you 
next week. God bless and goodbye.